Let's take a look at the ad A, B instruction. When you do an ad, there is one thing that you have to keep in mind. A and B are gonna be added together. You have already had to put the values you wanna add into A and B. You already had to have an instruction to load A and to load B. When you do an ad, it is simply one opcode. We are gonna have an instruction called add A, B, and it is going to have a particular opcode, and all it is gonna do is take whatever is in A and add it to what is in B. Now, when you do this, one, a couple questions arise. Number one, where do we put the result? you got to think about the architecture, and we made a decision, actually. We decided that what we're going to do is we're going to take the value of the ALU, and we are going to put it back onto bus 2, and we will actually load it back into A. So we need to do that. So here's all we really do when we add two numbers. We are going to say, boom, go. We're going to add. We read that opcode, and we are going to take A and B, add them together and produce the result. Oh, guess what? Due to the way our architecture works, B actually comes directly into the ALU, but A has to actually go out to bus one and then come over here. And that's to support different functionality. Maybe you wanted to add B to itself, okay? Maybe you wanted to do some crazy stuff. So what we do is we have to actually take A, which has a value in it, put it out to bus one, bring it back into the ALU, B is already there, we are going to produce the result using combinational logic circuitry. But when the result comes out, we need to tell bus to select to grab that information and then put it into A. That's the easiest part, really. We are also going to create an output that is going to trigger the condition code register. The reason we need a condition code register is this is where all the flags sit. We need flags that are going to track whether we have a carry. We need flags that are going to track whether we have two's complement overflow. While we're at it, there are two very handy flags to have, and that is one that says, is the result a zero? You use that all the time when you do things like for loops or while loops. Another one is, is the result negative? Okay. These are the four most common flags, and they exist in every condition code register in every computer that exists. Okay? The reason you care is because you want something to sit there and be held so that another instruction can come in and say, hey, what am I going to do here? If you look at the state diagram for how you pull this off, it is one opcode, and the opcode ends up being 40, okay? so, or 42. And I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to go out to address, or to memory, and I'm going to put 4, 2. That's it. And the program counter had to be pointing there, and life is good. So you can think about the first couple steps as fetch 0, fetch 1, fetch 2. All they did was take the program counter, and in this situation, it is sitting at some address. And we'll take the program counter, which is equal to something. And it will then be driven out onto bus 1, comes back over here, goes out into MAR, loads into the address. I go grab 4.2. 4.2 is going to come back into the memory system, and I'm going to put it where? I'm going to put it into the instruction register. Turn to blue here. So it comes up here, and I finally go into the instruction register. So now I know it is an add. That takes care of my fetch 0, 1, 2, and my decode. I finally now take a look at what I'm going to do. In one state, we can pull off a whole pile of stuff. Okay? We are going to do the following. I am going to first put bus, I'm going to put A onto bus 1. So I do bus 1 select is equal to A. I am going to tell bus 2 select to be the ALU. And then I'm going to do ALU select equals add. What I did there was I said, OK, if I have A is going to be an input to the ALU, I need to bring it out onto bus 1, bring it into here, and now it sits right here. B was already there, so I'm good there. The result, which is called ALU result, 
needs to come out onto bus two, and then in the same clock cycle, I can actually do a an A load. I can actually do A load. And what that'll do is it'll take the result of this ALU, and it'll load it into A. Now you go, that all happens really quick. But the thing about it, though, is that the A load is not seen until the next clock cycle. So on one clock cycle, you produce A load. The next clock cycle, you see A load. That gives you a full clock cycle for this combinational logic to compute. Then you also are going to inc or load the CCR, which will grab the values of the four flags N, V, Z, V, and C. That is all it takes to implement th that instruction. The key, though, is to look at the VHDL for it and see, is it really that simple? So here's what the VHDL actually starts looking like when you look at the ALU. First of all, this is just going to be a big old process, and it's going to be inside of your ALU device. You're going to have select lines which tell it what operation to compute. This one we're going to do is going to be addition, and it'll happen to be 000. So if you put 000 on the ALU select, it's going to add. The trick on it is you have to produce those four flags. That's where all the complexity comes from. To do this, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same thing that I did before using an adder. I'm going to make a five-bit adder. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to bake, this is an eight-bit computer, so I'm going to make a nine-bit unsigned result, and I am going to add A to B, but I'm going to pad it with zeros, and then use the plus operator and the reason that I did that was so that I could take the bottom eight bits, typecast them from unsigned to signed, and put that out on the result, ALU result. Now, that was the sum. That, that was easy. But how do I calculate all the flags? What is the negative flag? It's simply the most significant bit of the sum. So I take my sum, and I say bit seven is going to be bit three of a four-bit vector I create, which is called NZVC. So that'll be the negative. If it's a 1, it's negative. If it's 0, it's positive. What about the 0 flag? Well, how about an if-then statement that says, if the sum is equal to 0, assert bit 2, which is the 0. Otherwise, keep it 0. You're just adding combinational logic for each of these. Overflow? Get out of here. What am I going to do with overflow? You are going to put that same if-then statement that says, if I added two positive numbers and the result was negative, overflow. If I added two negative numbers and the result was positive, overflow. Finally, the easiest one, which was the carry, you just take the ninth bit, pop it into the carry location of that, that four-bit flag condition code thing, and you are done. That's all that is involved in implementing an add A to B.